Hey, good morning, party people. I probably shouldn't yell when I get started, right? That's probably a bad idea. Um, good morning, party people. I have a brand... Oh, I shouldn't be touching that while I'm talking to y'all. I have a brand new camera set up over for camera two. I got this big whole tripod thing going on here with a, an arm you know, just to make sure that it's not on my desk because I lean on... Geez, that, that, I have so much setup work to do on that light. Um, but... I lean on my desk a lot, and I don't want the camera vibrating when I'm uh, talking to y'all. Uh, so good morning, Spitfire RF, RAF, uh, good morning. You're in uh, in early as well, Surly Deb. Somebody said, is it Jim Van Allen? Jim Van Allen, oh wow, Diligent DBA Mala. Oh, good to see you, Mala, that's fantastic. I'd love to catch up with you sometime in person too. It's been uh, so long. Oh, Greg, good to see you again. Matt Oates, good to see you again as always. Jim, I wanted to say, Jim Van Allen on Twitch, I wanted to say you said uh, he was early yesterday. Do I have a schedule up anywhere? Because I had one at one point, and if I do, I need to go make sure it's not up anymore. Um, because I don't, uh, I don't uh, like go any specific time. It's just whenever I'm up and around and I get things to up and running. And I just don't want to set an expectation with anybody that they show up and then I'm not here. So it's always uh, tricky. Uh, yeah, it has been a while. It's so uh, it's uh, I would love to have caught up with you at pass this time around. That would have been such a good uh, thing. Jim says 5 a.m. I thought 5 a.m. was a normal. Oh, yeah, no, I'm all over the place. 5 a.m. would probably even be late for me. Usually I've, I'm up around two or three in the morning and then I you know, hop in the shower. I'll you know piddle around the office. Uh, and then it depends on uh, what all I've got going on out in the in the office, things going on with clients. I had a client on, uh, so normally I do this two-day SQL critical care thing, and I had a client on Friday, which means I've got the, their findings day on Monday. I got to write up their findings at some point here this weekend. But So this morning I am going to be live coding, fixing bugs in the first responder kit, and then depending on how time goes, I may also show you Eric Darling's uh, SP Human events and write a blog post about that as well. Mm. I always used to consider myself team profiler, you know, someone who used uh, profiler more than I did extended events. And then I just woke up one day and I was like, I haven't used profiler in years. Like I couldn't tell you the last time that I used SQL Server profiler. Uh, and I realized that I use extended events way more often than I use Profiler. And I, I never start an extended events trace from the GUI. I use tools. But these days, uh, uh, Eric Darling has this really slick SP human events, and I'm going to show that to y'all and, and write a blog post, taking screenshots as I go. So today you're going to see me working in a Windows VM with WordPress, GitHub, SQL Server Management Studio. I thought about uh, doing it with Azure Data Studio because we've talked about some of y'all said they'd like you'd like to see me working in Azure Data Studio when I'm doing my T SQL work, but I just didn't quite have the time to set it up this morning. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll just rock and roll with my existing easy live stream setup. I'm gonna change the brightness on one of my lights here just to make it a little easier. Want for y'all to see me when I pop in and start live coding. And let's go ahead and, well, I should have some more of my tasty beverage here first before I rock and roll. Mm. Espresso, it's what's for dinner. Uh, Jim says, favorite VM on Windows 10? I don't, I don't use Windows 10. I, I use um, uh, Macs. I use Mac OS. <laughs> I'm slow on the draw this morning. Holy smokes. Uh, I use Macs, uh, so then I use VMware Fusion on to, in order to create VMs. And I, I tend to use Windows Server just whenever I do SQL Server, just because it's what the clients use. So I tend to stick with the same exact thing. Good morning, Furpita. Good to see you again. All right, well, let's pop in and go get started. So I'm in GitHub in the first responder kit. Andy, <laughs> Andy says, I like that Brent is three time zones earlier than me, but I'm the one still in my bathrobe. I have, oh, this is almost too good to be true. I have a company bathrobe. Should I go get my company bathrobe and should I code in my bathrobe? Because that would be rather amusing. I think I still have it. Let me go see. So I have a wireless microphone so I can walk around as I'm doing it. It's either in my office closet or else it's in our entryway closet. So the story behind it, when we did a company retreat in Mexico, 
we do, we got uh, company bathrobes for the entire staff, and they have the logo on them and everything. Well, I never use it. I don't know why I never use it. I mean, I got a pretty good idea of why I never use it. I start working at like 2, 3 in the morning. So obviously that doesn't make any sense for me to go through and uh, start wearing my bathrobe. Let me see what's going on here. I do have it. Oh, yes. Okay, so I got both mine and Erica's. Let's see. Mine is the long one. There we go. Okay, let me go pull this out. Erica's going to be like, what the hell were you doing? Put this back in the closet. Turn that off. And let's come back in here. And... I've got to get it around my microphone cord, make sure that that doesn't snag. All right, so we have... Oh, I don't have the sash on. Let me change cameras here. Ta-da! Actually, let me give you the even better full... Uh, view. So there we go. Ta-da! Live coding in the company bathroom. <laughs> This is my life. Um, so yeah, so we had these made up for our trip to Mexico. And then when you think about it, so, so we had like six, seven people in Mexico, six, seven people in the company all together, like the spouses, everybody got these bathrobes. And we had to take these down to Mexico. There were like six, seven, eight of these things. And they weigh like, you know, it was an entire huge bag. It was like a hundred pounds worth of bathrobes. Um, and I was like, please, God, let, let the TSA or whoever open up my bag and find that I have like nine bathrobes and a bunch of swimsuits because that would be so baller. Uh, sir, why do you have like nine bathrobes? That would have been so epic amazing. I would have totally loved it. Diligent DBA Mala says, that was a time when Kendra and Jess were on the team. Yeah, and we did it the year after. I want to say Doug got a set too. I think Doug and his wife got a set. Uh, but yeah, all kinds of, <laughs> a bunch of people have had uh, company bathrobes now. It was pretty funny. Uh, let's see here. Uh, don't break the rule says I just downloaded some weird SQL stuff on my Mac. What have I done? I just wrote Python 3 version. I still, it's, it's been for me one of those things where I like, I can't get into Python only because I've, I suck at languages. I really suck at learning languages. And I, I'm, I don't want to go in and invest more of my life in learning another language when I'm like, I'm going to coast on C T SQL through the rest. Like I'm going to retire on T SQL. I don't mind being the old guy in the corner who still works on the main frame. And if the mainframe for me is Microsoft SQL Server, I'm 100% down with that. Like, I don't have any problems with that whatsoever. Like, it's not that I don't love to learn. I love learning. I just don't like learning languages. I don't like debugging. Ugh. And of course, what am I going to do now? What am I about to do? Debug. That's exactly what I'm about to do. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, so we have in here, oh, it would be really cool if it, I'll just have to step back a lot so that you can see the little, uh, I feel like I'm, uh, so, like you, so you can see the uh, uh, company logo, which is hilarious. Okay, so what we have here is we have firstresponderkit.org. So this is the GitHub repo where we where people can file bugs for the first responder kit. And I swear to God, people don't ever can. It's rare that people contribute their own code. What they do is come here and complain, and they want stuff, and then they don't ever actually do it. But this morning, I'm feeling generous. Uh, so this person comes in here, Parlevo, and says, hey, I would like to add an exception to this rule about tables in the master database. There's this table that's used to store your Microsoft Dynamics Navision license file. You will not find it in master if you blah, 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 blah. So he just wants one thing changed in SP Blitz. And I said, sure, go for it. That uh, pull request would be great. You're welcome. If you would like that change, you're welcome to make that change. And it's like crickets, you know, nothing actually happens. But it looks fairly straightforward, so I'll go ahead and add that for this person. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. He didn't respond, so I'll just assign myself instead of Johan there. And then we'll put it in the milestone for this month's release. Now, whenever I do work on a GitHub issue, so for the, for those of you who aren't used to GitHub and database source control and all that, <laughs> so it's funny, uh, INSXI, in she, I guess, uh, I have a doctor's robe too. I have a whole doctor's robe. I have a stethoscope. I did a, a, a Dr. Horrible. Is it Dr. Horrible? Dr. Horrible for a uh, costume for Halloween one year. So I have a whole Dr. Hollow, uh, Dr. Horrible get up with the goggles and all that stuff. <laughs> Grumpy Dev, I just figured it was spa day. T-SQL at the spa. 
Uh, yes, yeah, it's true. I do have the uh, the whole Doctor Horrible outfit. So I so now I got to start a new branch in GitHub for that issue. So the way that GitHub works is whenever you want to make a change to the code, you branch the code off separately. You make a new issue with the name of the branch or with the name of the issue that. You make a new branch with the issue that you're on. So here, I'm going to go create a new branch with, Hi, welcome to PyroCat. How cool of a name is that? Why am I getting doubles there? That's really weird. Uh, hi, everyone from Brighton. Hi, Orestus. Well, we'll just get doubles up there. That is what it is. Um, I'm tempted to go hit refresh the cache. Hold on a second here. Let's refresh that just to get it. Uh, and then refresh the cache of the current page, and done. And we'll see if that fixes that. That might work. All right, so let's see here. we got to create a new branch, 2426 SP Blitz. I'm thinking Playboy Mansion. Yeah, exactly, only a whole lot. Ha, ah, the Grumpy David, that's a good point. Uh, let's see here, exception to uh, master tables, new branch. So just a new branch is kind of like hitting file, save as, and saving your work under a different name. Now I'm going to go open that code, and I'm going to, this is what this person is looking for. Uh, so let's go look. I'm going to copy that out, and I'm just going to put it in a new query just so that I can see what he's looking for there. Then I'm going to go open SP Blitz. So C temp. And go see in the first responder kit. Good morning from Brazil. Hope you're staying safe and uh, healthy down there. I know, good job of grossly oversimplifying how Git works, right? I have a whole presentation at some point I should do on here uh, about how Git works uh, makes it... Uh, I try to do a just Git for DBAs presentation, uh, and I talk about branching and conflicts and merges and all that. So this person said said, exception to tables in the master database. I would like to add an exception. Da, 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 da. It really would be helpful if they had some kind of thing about what I'm looking for in the code. Now, they didn't, they kind of sort of got me close to it. They have this and name not in. So I'm going to do a control copy, and I'm going to hit control F to go see. And of course, no such luck. That's <laughs> kind of how my life works. So let's try just plain old command log. Let's see, maybe if we find it just in command log. Edwin, good to see you. Wow, from Singapore. Very good to see you. Um, so hope you're doing safe and well down there too. When do you get to come home? When do you get to come uh, back to Canada? Any word on when you get to come back to Canada yet? So let's see here. We'll copy out. This is the thing that that person wants to add. So that so with SP Blitz, the way that this works, let me scroll up a little and I'll show you. And I'm going to drop the font size down just a little to make it easier to put a check on one screen. Hi, Dejan. Good to see you again from Serbia. So the way that SP Blitz works is there's a temp table in SP Blitz. Hey, let's step back and get the full bathrobe effect, right? Um, so there's a temp table that we create at the very start of the stored procedure. And then every time we have a check in SP Blitz, all we're doing is we're just inserting a row if certain problems match. So here what we do is we check in the master database looking for tables. So here I'm saying in master sys tables, are there any tables that weren't shipped by Microsoft with these names? If they don't have these names, then it's a problem because I don't want people storing stuff in the master database because we rarely restore that database when all hell breaks loose. So he just wanted to add an exception for that table since that's the Dynamics Navision license. I'm going to put a note in here too, just in case anybody ever comes back in and wants to see where this came from. I'm going to put a note in here linking to the GitHub issue. So I'm going to go back over to the GitHub issue, copy paste the link, and I'm going to put a note in here at the end. That last one is from Dynamics, or is the licensing one, is the uh, Dynamics Nav licensing table. So now if somebody wants to know why we did that, they can go put that into their web browser and go see more information. Lord knows no one ever reads the documentation, but that's okay. Uh, so let's uh, execute it just to make sure she works. And then we'll run SP Blitz first, or SP Blitz. 
I'm also going to go create a table. Uh, I'm going to go create a table. I can't believe someone would actually name a table that. That's some messed up. So let's say create table. Uh, boom. Do, 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 Hey, hey, hey. What? Int. We'll just leave it at that. There we go. Create the table. And then let's run SP Blitz, and we'll see if we get an alert about that table existing. And you know, to be honest, I don't remember where tables in the master database is, where that alert is. I don't see it at first glance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another table with a very similar name. So paste, we'll call it do. And then we'll see if that, that one shows up in SP Blitz. It should show up in SP Blitz. Let's just double check and make sure. Uh, do 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 do. I know, right? I Andy, I feel the same way. I'm like this. This uh, there's something smells about Oracle to me with this. Um, let's see. Do we have? Where we don't have anything about tables in the master database. Oh, there it is. Yes. Okay. Cool. Woo! All right. Perfect. Um, so the one with a different name. Uh, that's perfect. So let's go drop that table too. Let's just drop both of those tables just so that we don't have those still sticking around. And then let's go check in our work. So let's save SP Blitz because this works successfully and I can close it. Now let's come back over to GitHub. So the GitHub desktop, I absolutely, hi, welcome from uh, Pakistan. Welcome to the club. Uh, so in here, I, man, I totally love uh, the uh, GitHub desktop and the automatic built-in uh, clapping has two Ps, just, just so you know. Maybe there's clapping going on too here, but that sounds kind of dirty, and I, I, especially me in my bathrobe, I would like to stay clean. Um, so in here, I love the built-in diffs inside of GitHub Desktop where it'll show you exactly what you changed. Because especially when I work on a Mac, very often I'll accidentally introduce illegal characters for Windows that it doesn't work very well. Uh, so here I can see that everything that I changed is fairly straightforward. Let's go check in our work. So let's say down at the bottom left, here's our check-in. So it's on issue number 2426, SP Blitz. Uh, exclude NAV license table. Uh, don't throw a warning about the NAV license table in mass in the master database closes number 2426. And it's just a nice little thing that if you put closes or fixes or whatever inside the issue notes and then this gets merged, that issue automatically gets closes, which is closed which is pretty cool. So let's commit, hit publish. It's going to take us back over to the website when we go to do a pull request. And so now, just to make sure that it shows that I have one file, so I also get the same diff over here, which is pretty slick. Um, so now I can say the person who's assigned is me, and the milestone will be July's release. This is a, an enhancement to SP Blitz, and then create a pull request, which means I would like the person who maintains that repo, that's me, to pull my changes into the development branch, and then I'm going to merge it. So I'm going to say it's because now I've switched roles. Now I'm, hi, I'm back. I'm the GitHub re, uh, maintainer. And then, <laughs> not the DBA you're looking for. I will totally do that. I don't usually uh, pay any attention to, to YouTube thumbnails. I'm a terrible creator. I mean, when I say pay attention, I, I don't when I'm creating the videos. I don't usually do that. I will for this one. Uh, so we've uh, done that pull request, and now the issue will automatically disappear. So the issue's gone. That's, as, as a open source maintainer, though, I also want to have it in my blog post when I announce a new version of the first responder kit. I want in my blog post to include what changed. This is where I keep like the equivalent of the release notes. So I already have a blog post started with the changes for July's release. July's release will drop like the first week of July. So I'm going to link to that issue. I'll say SP Blitz changes fix. Uh, ignore the dynamics nav. Or well, so when, let's let me rephrase that. 
when alerting about tables in the master database, ignore the dynamics nav license table. Number 2426, thanks, Johan Parr. I got to go back and get the spelling of his name. Let me get the issue link first. Copy that in there. Because I always want to make it easy for folks to click on links and see um, what was changed. Johan Parlevliet. 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 Okay. And then paste that in there and paste, and there we go. So there is, I'll save that change, and that is a GitHub issue fixed. Now, I should stop for a second and talk about the difficulty of that. I wish that it was easier for folks to pick up GitHub and run with it. It is not easy. The whole pull request and merging and like branching your own code, when y'all have to go and work in the first responder kit, it's a little bit painful because you have to go first, like clone the repo to your own GitHub account. I wish it was easier for people just inside a web browser to open up the SP Blitz code, make a quick change to it, and then submit it in as if it was some kind of suggestion. It, Junebug says, I wish there was a course for GitHub. There are a lot of courses, like GitHub's built-in documentation is decently good, but because it's not focused on SQL Server people, that makes it kind of tough because a lot of those concepts are, are focused on, say, Visual Studio Code or uh, Python. It, do it doesn't really ring easily true when you map it over to SQL Server. Mm. Somebody said that my cup is smaller than my hand. It's just that I have absolutely giant hands. That's what that is. <laughs> Uh, it's not really true. It's an espresso cup. I really like espresso. I like the taste of espresso. Okay, so we got our first issue done. Oh, let's stop and give a shout out to our sponsor. Um, so this week's sponsor is Bathrobes. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so this week's sponsor is Quest Software. They are doing a totally free webcast with me and Panal Dave that we're loosely calling Ask the Experts, and I use that term uh, loosely. Ace Flames here says the sound was way louder than your voice. Sorry, I'm very delicate flower. I try not to. Okay, all right, I'll fix that. Hang on a second here. Uh, so we'll turn that thing way down. We'll see what that does. Um, so uh, this week's sponsor is Quest Software, doing a totally free webcast called Ask the Experts, where Pinal and I get together and answer your questions. Now, it's only going to be like an hour long, so of course there are going to be a lot of questions that we don't get to. There's also a, a limit of 1,000 people inside there in the live webcast. Now, you can register whenever you want. The registration is totally free. But on the day of the webcast, make sure you show up at like five minutes early, because if you try to skate in there right when the webcast starts, it'll be full. This usually happens whenever I do webcast webcasts over there. So you can go to uh, register for that totally for free over at brentozar.com slash go slash experts. So that's this week's sponsor. Thank you for uh, Quest. Um, so Junebug also says, I find merge doesn't really work with SSIS packages in Visual Studio, so it's confusing to use. Yeah, uh, Andy Leonard is the definitely the person to ask there. Andy is the person in our industry when it comes to SQL. Now the, I mean, there are other people too. Like Tim Mitchell, I want to say, is uh, still doing SSIS work as well. But Andy's one of the big, huge uh, shining lights. Andy's much more professional than me. He doesn't work in a bathrobe. Uh, so all right. So now let's hit another issue. Because I want to say there was another issue, then uh, there are much better looking ones. I want to say there was another issue. Let's go see. Um, I'm not as cool as Brent. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. There was another issue. Let's go back over to the GitHub repo and go look at the issues. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Okay, there are a couple in here. So SP Blitz for, uh, I'll just, I'll work from the top down. SP Blitz Cache Arithmetic Overflow. Oh, God, I have no idea what this is going to be. So thankfully, this person put in uh, a line number. But of course, the problem, if you've ever debugged a stored procedure or, or, or any kind of T-SQL code, often the line number that comes back isn't really the line number where the problem is happening. So 
Let's go take a look and see if we can see around line 1340 and see if there's something that changed recently. Now, this also gives me a chance to show you something kind of cool inside of uh, <laughs> Shy Down Fantasy. You're awesome. Thank you. Uh, so let's go look. So we're going to be looking at SP Blitz Cash around line 1340. Oh, gee, Bargsley, good to see you. Uh, so let's go over to code. And then let's go down to SP Blitz Cash, and we're going to look at the code directly inside of GitHub. You see how it's got line numbers in here? Well, I can go down to 1340. Uh, so let's go, oh, freaking thing not rendering right. Uh, so let's go down to line 1340. SP Blitz Cash is a little bit on the large side. So when you're looking at code, this is how you know, you're like, come on now, there is no arithmetic overflow here in terms of creating a table with trace flags. So you know that that's not it. So what's happening at line 1340? What I bet that it is, is that SP Blitz Cache creates dynamic SQL. And it is entirely possible that the dynamic SQL is 1340 lines long or longer so what I wonder about is, in the last release, did we change anything in terms of line lengths? Because me finding where 1,340 lines in is in the dynamic SQL, forget it. It's just going to be a giant pain in the rear because the, ver the uh, string that gets built is different for every version of SQL Server. Depending on what DMV columns your version supports, you're going to get more or less lines inside the query. Ah, there's no way in hell I'm troubleshooting that. So what I was going to show you was blame. This blame button, you'd think I'd be able to click it and just assign blame to someone. But if you click blame, what that does is it shows you the history, basically, of every line in here. And it tells you the last time that it changed. So if it was truly a problem in SP Blitz Cache at line 1340, if that report was right about the line number, then when I went down to line 1340, I'd be able to see, this doesn't exactly render uh, quickly, uh, more cacheable. I'm not taking a general Q&A inside this uh, session. Uh, so if you go down to, come on down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sitting bed to your 13. I'll try and keep quiet then for your sleeping uh, 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 kiddo. So here you can see line 1340 was last changed three years ago. So you can be really confident that this isn't the thing that changed in the last release or two. And I love how you can see inside here, you know, who changed this area last. And then you can go in and click on their pull request and you can see what they changed around that time. That isn't what's happening here though. What's happening here is that there's something else at some other line. So let's look at if I say that, um, that what changed in SP Blitz Cache since the last release, what I can look at is I can go over to the master branch. So there is, I'm going to stop for a second here, and because this is kind of interesting. <laughs> So in today's day and age, there's raised sensitivity around GitHub calling things like the master branch. Because obviously in the year 2020, we should not be using the term master and slave. So there was a, a movement last week about getting people to rename their master branch in GitHub as something else, like main or production. I want to do that. I want to rename the master branch as something else, but it's going to break stuff downstream. Because, for example, there's an Azure Data Studio plugin uh, that fetches the last version of the first responder kit. There's a DBA Tools commandlet that pulls the latest version. And I'm going to have to go look at those things and see whether or not renaming the master branch is going to affect those things. So that's why I haven't done it yet. But I just want you to know that it is uh, right. At, it's you know in my mind that we have to do that. So let's come back to the code. So if I go in here, I want to see what changed in SP Blitz Cache since the last release. There is this uh, commits thing here where I can see everything that was committed. So here I can see what was committed like the from the dev release, from the release prep release, and so forth. So if I go in here and start clicking on this stuff, I can go in and look to see what changed. Barney of the Rebel says you can change it and then have an alias and then track what it affects that way. Yeah, Barney, if you want to put that in an issue, because I just won't take notes on it from here, obviously. 
Um, Richie says, Richie, do you have, Richie has a bathrobe too as well. So Joris, uh, Joris is on our team as well. I say our team, it's me, Joris, and my wife. That's, that's the entire team. And we all have bathrobes. <laughs> So you can see in here, so it says like shows 15 changed files. You can go down through the list and you can see which files changed. Like if I do a control F on here for SP Blitz cache, I can get down to SP Blitz cache and I see what changed inside this release. Um, uh, Diligent DBA says, Brent, could you make the fonts a bit brighter? Just a wee bit, the uh, screen is too white. I'm not sure how I would do that in GitHub. I'm not sure if you know how, I, I would be glad to do it. I just don't know how to do that. Okay, so now, because so coming back in on that issue. So here, I don't have enough to know what changed quickly, and I am not going to fish back through every change that was made to the release. So here, I'm going to tell him that I need, or him or her, I need more information. So howdy, I just checked line 1340, and it hasn't changed in three years. What I bet is happening is that uh, this error is coming from the dynamic SQL, not from SP Blitz cache itself. Can you try using the debug equals one parameter uh, and then going to the messages tab of there will come a day when I can type on a webcast without talking that day is not today uh, tab of SSMS pulling the dynamics or pulling pulling copy copying the dynamic SQL into an editor finding line 1340 and then pasting that general region in here like the 30 lines before and after to help me track that down. Thanks. Uh, comment. I'm going to not assign it to anybody, but I'm just going to throw in that it's a bug and it's an SP Blitz cache, and I'm not going to set it in a milestone yet because I don't know when we're going to get the information back in there. All right. Uh, don't change reading while typing. It's easier to listen to you than reading the small text. I believe it. Also, you need a larger monitor. Okay, so that's that one. That's SP Blitz Cache Arithmetic Overflow. Next up, we have SP Blitz First is reporting queries with 10,000 cardinality misestimations. I love this bug. So what this is, is in SP Blitz First, when we're checking to see um, uh, which queries are having a terrible time with performance, something that we can do with fairly recent versions of SQL Server is that we can go into this DMV, and I forget which one it was, but it gives us like a live execution plan of a query, and Eric Darling wrote this code that says, look at estimated versus actual, uh, look at estimated versus actual of each operator, and when any one operator is more than 10,000 X off, throw a warning. Well, what's happening to Greg, and it Greg is the person who did the issue, and me, because this happened to me on a recent session, is when SP Blitz first is running at the same time that it's running in another session, we get this error. So the, th the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go track down where this is being done in the code, and I'm just going to make sure that we exclude our own session just as a really fast fix for this. If someone runs SP Blitz first across multiple sessions, they have bigger problems anyway. So let's go pop open SP Blitz first and find this. So let's say, good Sir Winnie! Woo! Let's move that volume up just a little. I like that just a little bit higher there. Uh, so uh, Sir Winnie says, guess who had two things and uh, got approval for his live class season pass yesterday? Congratulations. Especially because it's on sale for like $3,000 off through um, the end of this month. So very nice. Um, <laughs> Star Wars dressing gown, that's excellent. I believe that you would have that too, Sir Lee Uh Hanny, so good morning. or uh, good. I guess it's afternoon in the Netherlands. I'm not quite sure. What time is it? 511. It's probably like midday in the Netherlands, I would guess. So let's see here. So let's go find that in SP Blitz first. We'll go uh, do another branch. Uh, Surly Devs, my girlfriend is the best. That's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, that's really all about what uh, personality is like, right? We uh, Star Wars Crocs? Star Wars Crocs. Star Wars Crocs. 
you are quite the character. Uh, so let's go back over to the dev branch. Oh, GitHub's telling me he wants to restart. So let's go ahead and restart just to get the new, whatever the new hotness is there. Uh, and then come back over here, ah, get back over there, uh, pull the origin again to get the latest changes that I made. Now I need to start a new branch and I need to say new branch, uh, 2420 SP blitz first, ignore own session, new branch. And then see what I did there. Surly Dev says, I posted a picture of, ah, may the fourth be, may the fourth be with you. Ah, nice. Yes. Uh, I think I did that for one of our first responder kit releases too. So now let's see here. Now I got to go open SP Blitz first and I got to find the line that says 10,000 X cardinality misestimations. So SP Blitz first. Now a second ago, when, uh, let me, I'll shrink this down and I'll explain what's going on. A second ago, when we were fixing a bug in, um, what the, how is that all grayed out? How are, oh, they're both. Oh, okay, it's one, oh, okay, nice. Um, so a second ago, when I was talking about SP Blitz, I said at the start of SP Blitz, what we do is we create a temp table, and then we do a bunch of checks that are all just inserts. We look for a problem happening in SQL Server, and if we find it, we add a row to the temp table. And we do this hundreds of times. Well, I do that exact same thing here in SP Blitz first. I, I'll go through and... And now I have to click on that, right? I mean, it's like legally required. Uh, can I get it from, let's copy that out. Oh, that worked perfectly because it launched another. Oh my God, I didn't need to see your feet that large. So that's kind of interesting. So you, so the people who are approaching you see Darth Vader. And it's kind of interesting because you know they have to look down. Like they have to look down in order to see that. And then at that point, you can lightsaber their head off, which it feels really odd to do lightsabering motions while I'm wearing a bathrobe. You know, this is like jumping the shark in an amazing way. Oh, I can follow you too now. I can stalk you over on uh, Instagram. All right, perfect. Uh, so now let's come back over here. So I'm going to insert rows into this temp table based on what we find. And the check that's involved is this right here. <laughs> you and me both. The check that's involved is this right here. Insert into Blitz first. Da -da 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 -da. Where the hell is the select? Oh, it's further down. Uh, cross apply. Da -da 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 -da. Outer apply. All right, so here's, here's where the query kind of finishes up right here. And you can see that this, here's the thing that I need to look for, is I need to make sure that the session excludes my own session. And this is like the bad fashion version of our webcast, right? Like this is uh, this is uh, all completely bad fashion. Andy says one unread email. People who maintain inbox zero make me ill. Woo! Inbox zero, baby. Uh, so I need to exclude my own session. So let's do that. Let's say and session. Uh, let's see here and s. Ah, oh, that's a join though. Yeah. Oh. Let's go, let's go, let's do it up higher because I see another session up here. Uh, our, God, who wrote this sequel? It's not, God bless. Uh, I, it's not formatted right. See, Richie, now I feel how you feel when you open my queries. And our session, oh, B, oh, and B session ID is anything other. I really need a where clause. I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be lazy and I'm, like doing bad SQL because I really I really should add it after this. This is exactly what I'm going to do here. So let's be nice and we'll say copy paste uh, plus n um, the where uh, uh, b oh hell if it's a if it's a table variable why do I not just if it's this up here why don't I just not insert rows into there for my own session? The hell is my problem? Um, so let's go back up to wherever we're putting, wherever we're populating that bad estimate table. So it is right there. So bad estimate. Oh, it's, oh man. It already has anything other than my own session ID. Damn it. I was hoping that we would have an easy fix. I was hoping that Greg was only reporting issues with whenever uh, the uh, SP Blitz first was catching its own session, but he's also catching when it runs in other sessions. 
So now things become a little bit more complicated because let's step back for a second and talk philosophically about what we need to do. What I need to do is I need to say when I'm looking in the DMVs and I'm reporting on problems with queries, I need to exclude a specific known query, SP Blitz first. Well, in theory, you could do that by looking for, say, SP Blitz first in the contents of the text, the text of the query that the person ran. But that check we just saw running is dynamic SQL. It's spinning up a new session to run, so SP Blitz first isn't going to be in the dynamic SQL. Also, I can't look for a query hash. I don't want to hard code in a query hash because every time the, ah, shy town, you're welcome, my pleasure. Every time we change the code, every time we change the code in the stored procedure, this is going to uh, change the query hash. So that doesn't work either. I don't know if I have a really fast, easy, <laughs> Excalios, welcome to the club. Uh, this is, these are our company bathrobes. So I don't, I don't usually do this, but Andy Mallon made me because he was in a bathrobe and he felt uh, underdressed. Um, so I, I don't know that I'm really going to have an easy fix for this. So I'm going to leave a note in the issue and I'm going to see if Greg wants to pick it up and run with it himself. Um, Unless, there's one other chance. I might be able to look for strings whenever I'm doing this check against ba the bad sessions. Let's go and look. I don't have high confidence with that. So in here, here's the part where we're getting out the bad estimates, and we filtered out our own SPID. We don't have the text of the query right here, so I don't have a really easy way to do this. So in here, I'm going to copy out the part that matters. And I'm going to come back over to the issue, and I'm going to give Greg the bad news. Uh, so, ouch, I popped open the code, and I see what's happening. This is only happening when SP Blitz first is running simultaneously from different sessions. And so that's true, Richie, and I have. I could pull off a lot of that. And I, what would be perfect is I would sit over here in my Eames chair, and that would really like totally jump the shark. I would totally be a you know a Don Draper kind of character there. Uh, running simultaneously from different sessions. When we populate the bad estimates, I want to say it's called bad estimates. It is bad es underscore estimate. The bad estimate table variable that's used to find uh, inaccurate find these issues we already have this filter boom uh, and ape 83 you're totally right i could do that but then the problem is that i also have to join out to the dmvs that have the text of the currently running query and i'm wearing a bathrobe so you can tell that i'm not actually uh up for any kind of hard work so Barney of the Rubble says, when you say simultaneously, is it async? No, it's simultaneously. Two different people are running SP Blitz first at the same time. So we already have this filter. So that means you're seeing the SP Blitz first running from another session like the one, like the one you so cleverly. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hoya, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, set up to run automatically every 15 minutes. Um, I would love to exclude, thank you, Andy. I would love to exclude that uh, query, but to do it, I would need we, we, and by we, I mean you. Um, I should also say, too, I know because I've seen this same thing happen when I've been teaching the mastering classes. I would love to exclude that query, but to do it by we, and by we I mean you, would have to uh, uh, examine the contents of the query itself, and at the point where we fill the bad estimate table, we haven't joined to the text of the currently running query. If we, and by we, whoops, and by we, I mean you, wanted to do this, uh, we, 
uh, you get the point, would need to uh, add a join to uh, something to get the text of the currently running query, examine it for, or, uh, uh, examine it to see if it's the SP Blitz first. Um, Ape83, no, we want to let it run at the same time. It's okay. So SQL Server is really cool. It's a database server that lets you run multiple queries at the same time. I know, right? It's amazing. Multiple queries at the same time. It's one of the reasons it's so expensive. I'm being sarcastic, but I'm not known for my uh, generous. Uh, Gabriel, uh, down to Dionfrail, good to see you. Third Espresso of the day. I'm right behind you, too, as well. Um, uh, D. Baugi says, it's not clear if your misestimate is greater than 10,000. Is the one se session really significant? That, that's a little off topic. I'm going to hold that one off for now. I don't think that you're quite the target audience uh, for this particular issue. That's okay. That's totally all right. Uh, see if it's the SP Blitz first query. And to do that, you may want to add an obvious comment to the dynamic SQL. SQL that's getting built like uh, from SP Blitz first, and then look for that. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, holler, but otherwise I'm going to close this because it's more work than I want to do because I'm wearing a bathrobe. Uh, <laughs> Put a wink in there. Comment. OK, so I'm going to assign that to Greg in case he wants to do it. Greg is a very smart, ambitious person, and he might actually do that. Uh, I'm going to call that a bug, and it is in SP Blitz first. I'm not going to assign a milestone, though, because I'm not quite ready to, uh, to commit to that particular one. So there we go. So that gets me uh, the two issues that are out there, uh, Surly Dev. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could put her on like a group chat and we could all talk to her. That would totally work. So there we go. I'm uh, kind of OK with both of those. Um, we have a couple of others, but I'm probably going to call it quits there in terms of uh, fixes for this morning. Um, so let's pop over here for a second. <laughs> Uh, D. D. Tovey says it's suggested that you don't hold your nose when you sneeze as it can cause bleeds. I'm hoping to try to blow some of my brains out my ear. I'm just entirely too smart, and I'm hoping that if I do this often enough that eventually I'll get dumber and then I can uh, be, do a better job. I'm just obviously foaming at the mouth. Um, so what we'll do is we'll stop here. Oh, I'll do a quick shout out to uh, Quest. So, uh, big thanks to Quest for sponsoring this week's webcast for allowing me to work in a wardrobe. I should totally try to show up to this wardrobe or show up to this uh, um, webcast in a bathrobe. Uh, so Quest uh, is sponsoring Panal and I to do a webcast on June 24th that we're calling Ask the Experts, and I have a hard time saying that with a straight face every time. Uh, Panal and I are probably the closest thing that you get to experts who are willing to sit around and answer your questions uh, for free. So if you have totally unrelated questions for SQL Server, you can go over to brentozar.com slash go slash experts, and we'll get uh, register for that. You also get access to the recording if you're not around during the live session. And it's just totally open Q&A, and we'll, I'm sure, given the number of people we're going to have, we're going to have boatloads of questions, but it'll be fun to go through there. So uh, now, <laughs> meet, <laughs> he said a meet uh, Jitsi session. All right, so what we'll do is we'll stop here for a bio break. I'll stop for a five-minute bio break, and when we come back, I'm going to show you Eric Darling's SP Human Events, because I think it's really cool, and I think a lot of y'all will think it's really cool, too. I'm not a big fan of extended events normally. I mean, they're kind of hard of a pain in the rear to set up. They're a pain in the rear to query. And Eric's made it really easy to go through and analyze some of this stuff with his SP human events. So I will go refill my tasty espresso and I will see y'all back in here in five minutes. So I'll be right back.
Welcome back. Yes. Oh, man. Isn't it great just looking at the sunrise out here? So it is uh, sun's breaking out in uh, downtown San Diego. My coffee shop downstairs opens at 8 a.m. And uh, so <laughs> you got, <coughs> <coughs> dang. Um, so my coffee shop downstairs opens at 8 a.m. Normally, I would say that you have me until 8 a.m. But because uh, the sun is rising, it's looking gorgeous, um, I got all excited because I was going to go take a trip with the car down over to the beach and just go uh, watch the sunrise. I was like, oh, I'm going to leave early today. Then I remembered that my car is in the shop, so it's in the shop for its very first service. So I have a 911. I have a Porsche 911. Just love it. It's absolutely wonderful. Got it almost exactly a year ago. Got it in July of last year been my life dream. I'd always wanted one and just Erica out of nowhere decided she's like, today's the day you're going to go down and buy a, a Porsche 911. I'm like thinking, I don't know what you're apologizing for, but whatever you're apologizing for, I'll take it. I'm gonna go buy it. Let's do this. And so we go down and get it. The, t t t when I took it in for service, so it was his first oil change, first oil change. We've had it for almost a year and it only has 2,500 miles on it. 2,500 miles in a year. I drive, I mean, like granted, I telecommute, I travel a lot for work, but it's usually on airplanes, but we drive. I mean, like I go on road trips, we go to Vegas, we go up the uh, West Coast and all that. 
But just because of one coincidence after another, we hadn't taken but like two road trips. We went up to Malibu a couple of times and that's it. Oh, Jim, nice. Very excellent. Both excellent uh, choices. Um, and uh, so we just haven't uh, been out and, and around at all. And my service guy, who I've talked to a couple of times since I've had it, just for, you know, like having little things done to it, not because it was broken, but because I wanted improvements uh, done to it. My service guy's like, Brent, really disappointed in you. You're really letting me down. So I got all excited that I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to go run up the beach for uh, sunrise. Yeah, no, not not going to happen today because the things in the shop. So I have a Porsche Macan for, which is a little bitty SUV for uh, for a loner, which I'll just go and drive around just to be out. Uh, give me an excuse to be out and around. See how that goes. All right, so next, uh, next, what shall we talk about? So next was uh, Eric Darling's SP Human Events. So for years, I've kind of said, like, I don't really use, Bob <laughs> Hav says, nah, Brent, let's go to the beach at the sunrise time and talk about SQL while we commute. What are we doing? We're already talking to SQL. I'm not taking the, the phone with me in the car, though, because I tend to break lives or break uh, laws when I'm behind the wheel of a car a lot of times. Um, the Carreras, the new Carreras, the new 2020s are just ridiculously beautiful. But I think for me, if like all I ever wanted was an 80s Targa, I wanted a, a red 80s Targa. And uh, unfortunately, I had my mind set on exactly the one I wanted. Steve Jones, the person who owns uh, or owned SQLServerCentral.com, uh, had a red Porsche 911 Targa. And I kept telling him, hey, look, I want to buy your Targa whenever you sell it. I kept saying it, kept saying it. And he wanted to be fair to other people because other people also wanted it. So he posted it on Facebook and said out on Facebook, hey, I've got, I'm going to sell my Porsche 911. And I don't read Facebook. Facebook's like terrible. Facebook has all this crap out there with all kinds of people's political opinions. And I don't care about their political opinions. Uh, so it's all this crap inside there. So as a result, I missed Steve's Targa sale. Uh, when I happened to see it, it was like two days later. And another friend of ours had told Steve he wanted it. I'm like, oh, no. No, no. So it's fate, and I ended up with a new one instead. But it's just uh, funny how life works out that way. Lee, I agree with you that the best Porsche is the one you can afford. And and Steve Jones, who has has had several through the years, kept telling me just it doesn't matter what you get. Go get one, any that you can afford, and you know just enjoy it while you can, while you're still young enough to drive. And now it's really funny because so Erica and I we bought this the new 911 Targa, and now anytime we see a brand new 911 on the road, it's always someone older than me. And I'm like, oh, I beat you. I got mine earlier. All right, so Eric Darling's SP Human Events. So for years, I've said that I'm a profiler person, I, the, that I always used SQL Server Profiler. And then I woke up one day and I was like, I don't actually use Profiler anymore. It's been years since I've used Profiler. I can't even remember the last time that I used Profiler. Um, and I use Extended Events way more. But the thing is, I hardly ever do it through the GUI or through T-SQL because Extended Events is a giant pain in the hahu in order to set up and query successfully. I know. <coughs> People like... People like Aaron Stilato and Grant Fritchie are like, it's as easy as, and then you see them, you know, hammering away like Kermit on the keyboard. And I'm like, yeah, that's not really that easy. Eric Darling has totally come up with a way where extended events is extremely easy to use. And I'm so excited about it when I saw it. He's got this SP human events stored procedure. Let me show it to you. And we're going to craft a demo on the fly. I'm going to write a blog post. As we go, I'm going to gather screenshots that will reinforce the blog post. You'll see me write the blog post live, basically. So let's go see how it works. <laughs> So the first thing that we're going to go do is we're going to go grab his SP Human Events. I'm going to go open a web browser and go SP Human Events. And so here we have Eric's site on SP Human Events. Eric loves recording videos, as I do, so he's got video walkthroughs in there. I am not going to record a video walkthrough of the public. Like, all we're getting ready to see is all you're going to see me do on it. He's got the video walkthrough thing nailed. I want to do a couple of blog posts showing people for those of us who like to read. Surly Dev says, does he stream? He does. He is twitch.tv darling data. He just started this, like 13 followers. Uh, so he just started this, and uh, he is just now, like, getting his green screen on and all that kind of 
of thing. You can totally follow him there. You can also follow him over on YouTube, but brand new. And I really like watching him work live. He's got a brilliant sense of humor. So very slick uh, stuff. So I'm going to go get his GitHub uh, and then pull SP human events so that I can go get the code. Oh, he changed it. Did it say yesterday? It did. Oh, he did a change to it yesterday. He's early dev. He has 14 now. That's good. So let's go get the contents of it. And I'm going to go put it into the master database. Close you and new query here and paste. So now I've got it over in the master database. So this thing is installed. Now let's go back over to his site and I'm going to show you the commands. So here he has a set of instructions with different commands that you can use uh, in order to see it sampling for stuff. This is all you have to do. All you have to do is run SP human events and tell it the kind of event you're looking for. This is so bananas. And I'll tell you the thing that I ran into all the time, troubleshooting live client. He was a ghost. Yeah, he's, he's still uh, nailing down the whole uh, how chroma keys work. Um, the one problem that I run into all the time at clients is people who run option recompile on their queries. They run queries that have recompile hints in them, and as a result, I don't get to see them in the plan cache. They just disappear, and their overhead is really high. So, oh, Surly Dev, I saw your message to me about that too, and I hadn't responded to that yet. I got to go respond to that. I'm really bad at responding to Twitch messages. I just don't go in there very often. So in here, he has event type equals compilations. So I'm going to copy this out and paste it. Uh, then he also has, he says, you got my hand, my hand. Yeah, exactly. I, I have to go through and actually read it. I haven't read it yet. I just saw that you had something about a pull request. And I was like, okay. Um, then he also has seconds sample. So I'm going to say, oh, yeah, no, no, I totally wouldn't ignore you on that one. It's just one of those where I'm really religious about inbox zero and email, but I have social profiles at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, GitHub, you know, like every platform out in the world. And so I tend to just kind of ignore all those other stuff and I just tackle stuff via email. So if you ever want to get me on email, just go to the site and hit contact up top. It's help at brandozar.com. And I respond to those really fast. So this will go through and it's amazing what this actually does. Just this one line goes and sets up the extended events trace, holds it open for 30 seconds, then gives you the output in a format that actually makes sense to human beings. Now to see it work, what I need to do is I need to have a query that's actually doing compilations. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to run a query, select star from, let's go pop over into say Stack Overflow, select star from DBO users, you where you display name equals uh, Brent Ozar, order by, uh, no, let's do, yeah, sure, that's fine. Uh, order by you score descending, option recompile, lucky you is correct. Uh, so that gets me, oh, it's not score, it's reputation. And let me zoom in on these fonts too here to make it easier for y'all to see over online. So I'm going to run this query over on the right hand side. I'm going to go run it 50 times. Now the t problem that you've usually run into with option recompile queries is that they don't send up, <laughs> yes, thank you, sir, that they don't show up in the plan cache. So when I go and execute this 50 times, and I'll just go ahead and run it, if I run typical uh, plan cache type monitoring queries that say, uh, will show me the queries that have done the most reads, for example. If I go through and run an SP Blitz cache query saying, show me the queries that have run the most reads, it's not going to show all of that stuff over in here. This query that's been running over and over again, it doesn't even show up in this list for SP Blitz cache. Same thing with a lot of monitoring tools. A lot of monitoring tools won't cache it. I know, is that Go50 cool or what? It's like a built-in denial of service, not distributed denial of service, but just a denial of service attempt. So that doesn't work. So what I need to do instead is I need to catch compilations. I need to catch the number of times that this thing has been compiled. 
So this time, over on the left-hand side, I'm going to start SPHuman events. Then I'm going to go run my query on the right hand 50 times. And what SP Human Events is doing is it has already started an extended event session. It's basically doing a wait for for 30 seconds while the query on the right is going ahead and doing its thing. What I love this for is that I don't even have to start any queries. What I do in a client environment is I'll just go and run SP Human Events looking for compilations for, say, 60 seconds. And now look at what I get inside here. This is awesome. It tells me how many times the query has been run and compiled. I don't even have to do anything. And I can catch here, am I having a problem with uh, queries that are trying to sneak in using recompiles? So you can go run this in your own environment. It's also really interesting to see the compilation overhead. One of the problems that we run into when people run queries with option recompile is that compiling a big execution plan is hard. The more things that you put inside the query, the more problems that SQL Server has to think about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a query that will uh, show that will uh, be a stored procedure. It's going to use option recompile and we're going to give SQL Server some tough choices. I'm going to say create or alter proc DBO USP search users and we're going to say uh, location and care 100 um, start date date time end date date time as begin and go then I'll say select top 1000 star We'll just say star because we're terrible people. Uh, from DBO users, you, uh, inner join, DBO posts, P on you. Oh, we'll do comments. We'll search for their comments. Comments, C on you, you uh, ID equals C user ID. Where you location equals location. And C uh, comments creation date is greater than or equal to start date. And, whoop, dip, dip, dip. Uh, and C creation date is less than or equal to end date. And let's say that, oh, we'll also say order by. We'll throw in an order by to say order by. Show me the comments by score descending. Show me like the most popular comments. Um, then we're, we'll give SQL Server a couple of indexes. I don't know that I have indexes on this these tables. Let's go see. SP Blitz index table name equals users. So let's see, do we have any indexes on it? We do. We don't have one on location though, so I'll have to create that. Create index location on DBO users location. Then I also need to check the comments table to see if I've got an index on date there. And I do not. I have one on user ID creation date. I actually don't want that one. So let's go drop indexes. So let's go drop indexes. And then we'll go create index creation date on DBO comments creation date. So we'll go create both of these indexes. And then when that's done, I'm also going to... So I'm setting up basically for the blog post now. So I got my store procedure. Now I'm going to, oh, I forgot about the option recompile. I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to say option recompile. Then I'm going to uh, build a couple of call stacks that will give SQL Server tough choices about which index it should use first. Um, so early devs, I have a friend that would never use creator alter as he thinks it might. Oh, uh -uh. so what, uh, what some people will do uh, what I've seen people do is just do a raise air, raise roar right at the first of the, at the beginning of anything that they uh, type, or they'll do a return, uh, and then they'll throw a, a default raise error inside there, so that that way when it, they try to hit execute, it just automatically bails. But I like that same exact thing. Uh, so now I need to give SQL Server a couple of choices. So let's say exec USP search users. I'm going to need a location that's fairly rare. So I'm going to say near Stonehenge. Yes, there is a person near Stonehenge at Stack Overflow. Uh, start date equals uh, 20 or 2010 0101. 
end date equals 2010, 12, 31. Then we'll also do, uh, we'll do a much more common location. We'll say London, United Kingdom. And then we'll say a very tight date range, 01, 02. Let's see if these two get different execution plans. So it always helps to put the stored procedure into production. I find that that's very helpful. <laughs> So now let's see if we get uh, what execution plan we get for inside here. <laughs> SQL Server, you're so crazy. Um, so SQL Server, when we said near Stonehenge, it decided to do an index seek on location first. Now let's take the exact same query and let's run it for London, which is a most much more popular location. And SQL Server chooses a different index. SQL Server chooses to do it on creation date. Beautiful. This is the kind of reason that people implement option recompile inside their stored procedures. Damn, my voice is cracking. I'm going through puberty in a bathrobe in public. It's so awkward. Mm. Barney, no, I don't. <coughs> I know Richie does, but I don't. Uh, so in here, I've got option recompile inside here. Very common for people to use this kind of thing. Let's do go 50 and go 50 on this. Then let's do our recompile piece. So let's start our sample and then let's do this 50 times. <laughs> Lee. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. You know, I don't want uh, actual execution plans on for this. That's going to make this thing take a little bit longer. Let's go do it with the other one. Let's actually move these around so that that one goes faster first, then goes this one. So we got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So now over on the left hand side, when our sample finishes, now I get, isn't that amazing? You get the parameters. That is swank. That's incredible. So now when you have out in real, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people who struggle with fixing parameter sniffing issues where they're struggling trying to get the um, parameters to use to call a stored procedure because people are constantly calling it with different parameters. Good afternoon, uh, Khalid. Um, people are constantly calling it with different parameters. Now you get the parameters you can use in order to tune a stored procedure. That's the kind of thing that I used to have to fumble around in the back seat of a car, you know, like a teenager in high school when I was trying to figure that stuff out. What parameters do people usually use? What parameters are fast? What parameters are slow? And you don't have to know anything about extended events in order to get it. it just happens for you automatically. That is totally cool. <laughs> So this is going to be the, the screenshots that I end up using inside the blog post. So that's pretty straightforward. Now that's by no means the only trick that this thing has up its sleeve. You can do, Vabav says, if we use encrypted, can it still show the parameters provided? Let's go find out. I don't remember offhand how to create an encrypted stored procedure because, let me tell you something. <laughs> encrypted stored procedures are bogus. Encrypted stored procedures can be decoded in five seconds using SQL Decryptor. SQL Decryptor is a totally free tool out there. You can go download an evaluation version of it. I want to say the real version of it costs like 500 bucks, but the eval version does everything the paid version does. It just does it for a limited amount of time. So when people do de encrypted stored procedures, I'm like, just let me show you something. Watch this. Pop open the demo of SQL Decryptor. Decode all their stored procedures. And I go, okay, now any questions? You thought you were hiding something from me. It's totally decrypted. Any questions? We're going to decrypt these all in production right now because the encryption makes no difference. Like it's not saving anybody from anything from finding out super secret secure source code. So uh, let's do SQL Server create encrypted stored procedure. And then let's see here. Uh, MS SQL tips. Let's try that one. Um, Lee says a plane in the background. Did one. I am on the flight path for uh, San Diego Airport, and it's always kind of nice to watch uh, how that works. Uh, so let's see here. Do, 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 with encryption. No, come on. 
Uh, that can't be. Where's the stored procedure? Uh, da -da 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 Just why is this? Come on, that's ridiculous. Uh, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Um, so, Pinal, okay, there we go. That's better. Uh, so stored procedure with encryption. Okay, so thank you. Create procedure, create procedure with encryption. What a load of uselessness. No, I don't mean Pinal's post. I mean that the feature is a load of uselessness. Um, so let's slide over here and let's create it as encrypted. So let's copy this and paste this down here. Um, and that surly dev, I'm with you actually. Yeah, that I, I've done the same thing with um, as an, a software vendor. I've said I'm uh, encrypting this just so that I can uh, have obey the letter of the law with our audience, with our auditors. And I've also told my customers, look, I, I didn't want to encrypt it. And if you need to decrypt it, just go use SQL Decryptor, and we're out of here. And that's kind of the end of that. Um, so let's go with encryption. I believe that it is encryption. And let's like hi hacker speak there with encryption. Uh, so we'll go in here and say encrypted. So now we got that stored procedure. Let's go execute that and see if that works. That's ridiculous. Um, then let's go copy paste in our call stack so that we can call this little fella 50 times. We're going to change the name of the stored procedure there. And then let's go fire open our compilations call and we'll go run this 50 times. So I'm running the encrypted version of the stored procedure 50 times while we get a, a sample over there from SP Human Events over on the left hand side. My hunch, I've never tried this, but my hunch is that we'll still get complete info from uh, SP Human Events because we're not seeing the inside of the stored procedure, we're just getting the outside stuff. So I think it's still going to give me parameters. Let's go see. And ta-da! Yep, perfect. Sweet. That is fantastic. Still gives me everything even though the stored procedure is encrypted. So that's kind of cool. Now, so we've got that solved. Now the other thing that I wanted to do back over on Eric's piece do, 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 do. Um, so over on Eric's piece, this is the other thing that I wanted to show you is recompilations. Not compilations, but recompilations. What's the difference? <laughs> so the difference between the two, compilations is when you specifically asked for a compilation. You said option recompile, give me a new compilation regardless of whether or not there's a plan in memory. Recompilations is a little different. Recompilations means there's a valid plan in memory, but something happened inside SQL Server that caused it to have to build a new plan. Classic example, statistics being updated. When someone updates stats, we have to go build a brand new execution plan because something about the table may have changed. There are some gotchas inside there. There are situations where it doesn't build a new plan. It's really kind of neat. Kimberly Tripp and Aaron Stellato have posts on this. So anyway, so what I'm going to do in order to demo it is that I'm going to run the same stored procedure without recompile hints. I'm going to build a new version that doesn't have a recompile. But what I'm going to do is update the statistics, like rebuild the indexes on the users table to force updating stats, which will then trigger a recompile because the stats have changed. So let's go write that demo. <laughs> So let's copy that uh, call stack. So that is recompilations. Move this over here. Welcome to the club uh, corrupt. So now we have recompilations. Then to trigger that, I am going to need to run build a, another version of this stored procedure, but without the recompile. So we'll copy this guy out and come all the way down and we'll call him stable. And then I'm going to take the recompile out and then go get my version of the stored procedure, copy, and come down here. And then I'm going to say uh, alter table dbo users rebuild. 
go. So what this is going to do is in the middle of after this thing's already been put into cache, we're going to be forced to build a new execution plan for it because the stats have changed. Even though the parameter I'm using hasn't changed, it's not like it's a parameter sniffing problem here. I'm getting a recompile. You know what I'm going to, uh, it's always, it's always tricky as an instructor, like how many different things I want to try to teach you inside one blog post, you know, drawing the line of where I'm going to stop versus what I'm going to explain. I think this is going to do enough that it's going to explain to people what the concept that I'm dealing with. So let's create or alter the stable stored procedure. Let's change the name of this down here. And then let's go start our sample for recompilations. Then let's do all three of these. So I am right now over on the right hand side, I executed the stored proc, I rebuilt the indexes, then I ran it again. This will trigger a recompilation because the plan was up in ramp, but SQL Server said timeout, change stats on this table, we better go through and rebuild a new execution plan. So over on the left, I should see a new execution plan having been built uh, inside the span of that 30 second time span. And sure enough, woo! -hoo! Yes, right there. Uh, so, ta da! So, and the recompile cause. Hot diggity! Shows me the recompile cause as well. This thing was recompiled because something about the schema changed. And I, I said schema changed. It's I'm going to have to go through and Google read in the source code to see what's going on, what, what the different options are, because that's actually the only reason that I've ever asked, seen that. So yeah, I'm Lee. I'm with you. I think that that's extremely cool, um, especially when you're trying to find out what's causing plan cache instability. This is a really cool tool to have in your disposal. So that is Eric Dar. Darling's SP human events. I'm really only showing you two of the things that it's good for. There are a whole lot more. If you go through and read his uh, YouTube or his YouTube channel, he has demos on uh, these, and he's been really excited to show these to people and to give you improvements too as well. It's really slick. I just really like it a lot. So that's everything that I wanted to show y'all around SP human events. I'll go gra gather the screenshots for those. So I want to thank again Quest Software for sponsoring this week's webcast. So if you go to brenozar.com slash go slash experts, Pinal and I are doing a session on June 24th where you can ask us whatever performance tuning or database administration questions that you want, and we'll go through and answer those. And some of them will probably save for blog posts too as well. Very often in these open Q&A kinds of webcasts, we get all kinds of great questions that we don't have the time to answer. So those are always fun. So you can uh, register for that at brenozar.com slash go slash experts. Then also, if you can't make it to the live session, you can also register because whenever they get the recording, they'll email you a copy of the recording for free. This is one of those that won't be up on Twitch or YouTube. You have to be registered with them in order to get it. So that's everything that I wanted to show you all today. I hopefully uh, you all had some fun. I am now going to go change out of my, my company bathrobe here and then go, uh, go for a morning run, go grab some breakfast. I say run. I don't want you to think that I'm actually doing exercise. Good God. Uh, what I'll be doing is uh, just taking a run with the car and then ODB Augie. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, is it, I'm guessing Augie is your nickname, I guess is probably how that uh, came about. Uh, but so yeah, I'll go, um, don't go for a run in the car and go rock around and grab some donuts or whatever. And I will see y'all out and around. Uh, th no, you know, surly, <laughs> surly dev. I could actually, the people at the coffee shop know me really well. The problem is it's still two hours before my regular coffee shop opens. And if I just go to some rando coffee shop wearing a bathrobe, I don't think that's as funny. I think it's funnier when the people know me and and then they go, oh, it's Brent. Yeah, no, he's just wearing a bathrobe today. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. So I will see you all the next time around. Thanks, everyone, and see you later. Adios.